rating the show in iTunes. Just log in, click review, leave a big old fat five-star review, and let everybody know that you dig the show so that they can dig it too. To get all the links and resources we mentioned on today's episode, please go to copychief.com forward slash T-A-M, as in truth about marketing. And if you'd like to uh, learn more about how you can improve your sales copy with uh, templates, formulas, coaching, feedback, or hiring a pro, do all that on the inside of the members area of copychief.com, and I will look for you there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. I am as far from a technical digital person that you can imagine. I mean, you know, I, I really am. Like, I, I hardly respond to emails. Um, and so for me, it was it was about um, you know getting excited that oh I can I can emulate this I can I can I can copy what they've done and I can add my own spin on it and make it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And so my advantage was that I, I was doing that. And I think most people don't realize that. It is not even about the idea. It's about like, what is the market telling you it wants right now? You hear all the bull about marketing every day. Make your money in your sleep. My new offer is crushing it. My guru could beat up your guru. It's time to go right to the source and get the truth about marketing. With your host, the founder of CopyChief.com, Kevin Rogers. Welcome back to The Truth About Marketing. It's Kev Rogers here. My guest today is Chad Moretta. You can find Chad at AppEmpire.com. And what an amazing story. This is going to be really inspiring and insightful today. Uh, at, for a very young age, Chad had a huge life interruption and let him tell you all the dramatic details. But, you know, a great story of perseverance from uh, one industry to another and just, you know, upgrading his lifestyle in a huge way. So uh, this is particularly of interest to you today if you're feeling overworked, you know, stressed out, and like you've just run in full speed on the treadmill to stay afloat and don't know what the hell else there is to do. I think you're going to love Chad's story today. So, uh, Chad, thanks for being here, man. Hey, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you for the intro. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to uh, to connect with you guys today. Thanks, man. Yeah, you've you've done some amazing stuff. Uh, in fact, I was just watching an interview uh, with you and Tony Robbins. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of people want to interview Tony Robbins. Pretty cool when Tony Robbins wants to interview you. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very grateful, very privileged for that. Um, that was, you know, Tony's been definitely one of my my uh, my mentors and somebody I'd looked up to for a very long time. So yeah, when that interview happened, I was like checking it off the list. You yeah. know, I was yeah. really happy about it. Yeah, cool moment. So I want to get into all about um, app creation. This is really fascinating to me because so many people. I think everybody's got either what they think is a great idea for an app, or like their mm-hmm. their stoner friend who's always coming up with app ideas. Or their yes. their wacky uncle, you know, who swears he's going to make a million dollars, but it's such yep. a great idea he can't even share it with you, right? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, then, so many stoner friends and crazy uncles. It's crazy. Everyone's constantly throwing app ideas around. Right. And most people, I mean, they just get deadlocked the minute they look into how the hell do I get a, an app built? That's it. That's as far <laughs> as they're ever going to get. But you actually, you know, help people uh, build these apps, and you've created many millionaires yourself. Uh, yes, doing this. But before we get there, uh, I want to jump okay. into the Wayback Machine and visit young Chad. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of interested in what kind of kid you were, because, again, I think a lot of people hear stories like yours and they just assume there's some secret magic ingredient that that only special people possess. Right. So in, in your young totally. life, uh, were there signs of of a budding entrepreneurial empire builder all along? Or? No. No, no, not at all. Um, yeah, no, I, um, as a kid, I grew up in a very small town in Vermont, uh, you know, was raised pretty poor, um, you know, like household income of like 30 grand, uh, mm. you know, and just, just watched everyone around me sort of struggle. Um, I was actually, I had a, a couple learning disabilities. I didn't find out until later on that I had like dyslexia and mm. I just felt, I, I honestly felt really slow compared to everybody else. I had, I was like, like that kid walking around, 
you know, with, with like a, a, basically a special assistant to, to walk me through everything. And, you know, my brain worked differently. And, um, especially at that time, it was just challenging. So I, you know, I was definitely, I felt like I was not very smart at all as a kid. Um, I like to have fun, you know, I had a lot of friends and played lots of sports, but, um, I definitely don't think I showed the signs of being an entrepreneur and, um, you know, and, and also didn't show the signs of like, you know, going into a massive career either. I was sort of confused. Interesting. Yeah. So at what point then you, you get into real estate. Uh, so like, was that sort of by default? (laughs) What do I do? Or how do you end up in real estate? Yeah. So I am an awful employee. I mean, just completely (laughs) awful. So I tried a couple jobs and, uh, completely sucked at them and (laughs) felt the same thing that I felt in school. And I was like, okay, this just is not for me. And, uh, and also I just wanted a different path. I mean, I'm sure even people listening, it's like, you know, you, you see other people and you see them living a different life. And then you look at your life and you're like, wait a minute, I know there's a different way of doing things. And when I was looking at my, my family and my friends and I saw them working so hard and not being happy and, and I was like, okay, well, if I go down this employee route, this box system, then these are the results I'm going to get. And, you know, this is where I, I do give myself credit because you know, I, I made that decision that um, I'm not going to go down this path that leads to, in my mind at that point, you know, depression and really not a very um, abundant life. And so mm-hmm. I chose, I chose to be an entrepreneur. I didn't really know what that meant, but I was like, I'm going to try this different path because it looks like people are much happier at this. And you know, I love to create. I think as human beings, we all want to create something, and so that's always inspired me at an early age. You know, I was never. I was never like an artist or anything like that, but I just always sort of liked having my, my, my fingerprint on something to, to make sure that I could create what I wanted to. Very cool. What, what ways did that sort of come out if, if it wasn't yeah. music or art or anything? Well, it started, you know, interestingly enough, um, I started my, my creative kind of part came out when I started looking at being an entrepreneur and, and mm. businesses. And so um, I had a newspaper um, I had a, a little newspaper company and I went from, I basically went from you know, being in college, um, you know, not knowing how to afford college and having to create this eBay business. Um, so my first day at college, my roommate comes in to meet me and he couldn't even walk into the room because there's so many eBay boxes <laughs> around there. So I was literally selling things on eBay, um, making fake IDs for people. I was just like, <laughs> whatever I could do. If you'll pay me for money. it, I'll find a way to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And so I realized I'm like, wow, I'm actually, I'm resourceful. You know, I think differently than other people. And so that's why I'm getting results. And, uh, and so I started, you know, just asking better questions. And because I didn't have any money and because I had nothing to lose, I was like, well, I, I don't really have any money. I got nothing to lose. I might as well put time into this because what else am I going to do? Yeah. And so I found myself being creative with certain marketing. You know, uh, I found myself being creative through um, the different products that I seem to enjoy. You know, I, I learned myself being creative through. Um, you know, like leaving little notes, like even at that time when I chip an eBay package, when they open it up, there would be like a little note for me. Mm. And, um, and, and it would make that person feel really good, you know, and they would, they would put a, give me a rating. And, and so just little things, I was like, huh, I kind of like connecting with people and being creative in this spot. And wow, this is called marketing. Wow. This is called relationship building. And mm. oh my God, okay. I can make money from this. So it started at that point in college. And then Later on, when I opened up uh, uh, my own newspaper company, um, I started using some of those skills and the light bulbs started going off. Wow, really fascinating. So it was all very organic and then you just discovered along the way that there was kind of names for these things and that they were actually systems that people teach and put in place. Exactly. Yeah, I had no training. Um, You know, I had no one to really go in. It was before I was reading really any books on Tony's or anything like that and um, yeah, I get to that point where I was, I was just so driven to have a different life. And I was like, it's just about, you know, really putting yourself out there. So I used to, I didn't have any money and I bought almost every course that was out there. And, um, and just, you know, I had a 30 day period till Carlton sheets. I was, you know, taking notes on that and, um, you know, just whatever I possibly could, could learn from mm-hmm. these courses. I was just, you know, assimilating it. Now, is that, is that what led to, uh, um, real estate or is that the way out of real estate? 
Um, that's what led to real estate. I was thinking, I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know how to, I, I opened a newspaper company and basically worked myself like ragged running all the different parts of the business. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't, you know, I didn't really understand business that well. I, I said, okay, well I need to buy a franchise. So I became mm -hmm. one of the youngest franchisees to, to buy this, this, um, this franchise called help you sell. And I said, okay, well a franchise will at least show me and give me training on how to actually run a business. Yeah. Real estate, I'm good at. I know South Carolina is the market, and so I convinced myself that you know I was going to make my millions from this real estate company, and all the money I'd made with my newspaper company and everything else, I just threw everything in, which is exactly what you're never supposed to do. Mm. And um, and I actually, I mean, this is hilarious, but to even buy the franchise, I remember it was, I mean, and again, I don't recommend anybody doing this, but I was so motivated that. I needed like a certain amount of money. And so I was selling everything I owned. I got a loan from my grandparents and showed to help you sell. Hey, look, I've got this money. And, you know, and I, and I just, mm. you know, I started the company undercapitalized. And mm. um, and I learned a tremendous amount, especially, you know, when I started it back in, in 2006, um, 2007, like one of the worst possible mm. times anybody can start a real estate company. Mm. I did. As it turns <laughs> out, right? Who knew? But yeah. Well, yeah. again, I want to point out mile marker here. Um, a lot of people have that experience you just described, and then that's it, right? It's like hard yes. luck story, uh, but, and then they just scurry on back to and figure they have to eat it and be an mm -hmm. employee because that's that's why so many people are employees because this whole business thing is hard and the odds are yes. against you. Totally. And so again, a great moment of inspiration here. Okay, so. There's a great pivotal moment here. You're into the uh, uh, real estate, um, as you as you mentioned, calamities mm -hmm. around the corner for the 2008 crash. Uh, you're mm -hmm. stressed out. You're working like 18 hour days. Uh, yes. Everything tanks in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. But there was a much more dramatic personal moment uh, waiting for you down the road. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a moment I'll never forget. I it was it took my one day off in like a year and a half. It was actually an evening off, it wasn't even a day off. And I went up to Charlotte to meet um, a friend there to watch a basketball game. And uh, I ended up having quite a night. I ended up meeting Michael Jordan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of my, I mean, I was totally enamored by by him growing up and watching him play ball. And then I looked around and I noticed all these people enjoying, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but like people enjoying themselves mm -hmm. and like connecting with people and, and, you know, just being stress-free. And I looked at my life and I'm like, what am I doing? Like mm -hmm. I was barely able to take this night off. You know, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm really like just putting myself down to the gutter because I'm working so hard and I'm like, I have to make a change. And I remember that moment in the game it was right around halftime, me deciding that. And wow. it's amazing when you when you actually commit to something, how the universe unfolds and sort of says, okay, well, let's let's make that happen for you. Uh, I was driving home from that game. It was, I think, like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night in Charlotte. And I had about an hour and a half drive, two-hour drive home. And, um, and I was driving home and thinking about that and how can I change my life? What can I do? And all of a sudden, this deer jumped out in front of me. Mm. And, uh, and I hit it and I had a, this Lincoln, this huge Lincoln truck. And so I counter steered a couple times, almost got out of it. And then I hit the median mm. and the median had rained the night before. So I was going, you know, 75 miles an hour and my truck flipped four times oh, okay. and, um, four times. And, and my arm ended up, you know, basically getting shattered into a million pieces, my left arm. Cause I, I rolled on my left side and, oh. And, um, man, everything turned upside down for me. And, you know, I, I was trying to figure out if I was alive or not. I thought I was dead for like the first hour and everyone was angels and I was so out of it. And, wow. um, and, uh, yeah, they ended up cutting me out the jaws of life and, mm. and I get into the, the, the hospital and not knowing anything. And it was my dominant arm. And, uh, I'd always wanted to play basketball, um, you know, professionally. And I had a couple opportunities and, but I had this hope in my mind that I'd play at some point, And then when, when my left dominant arm is mm. crushed and they're like, you'll never use that again. Oh, uh, I went into such a depression, um, you know, and it, it was, it was definitely the most challenging part of my entire life. And, you know, obviously there's, there's a good point to it. It was the be best time of my life as well. Wow. Amazing. So 
I mean, already you decided uh, you got to make a change. Yep. Bam. You hit a deer. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, so now you're in this period rather than feeling like optimistic and like, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something different. Maybe get fired up, find what it is. Yeah. Now you're going to yeah. crawl out of a hole. Exactly. Know, give up on some, some childhood dreams. How did they get you well? Like, how long did that take? Well, it's actually, yeah. So the hospital I went into was, was pretty awful. Um, mm. They, you know, for a couple of days, uh, they basically had glass in me. They weren't, it was like a lot of students. I was getting different, um, you know, different, basically people coming in, telling me different stories. I might lose my arm, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the, the, that day I got something in the mail before the accident, uh, before the actual game. And I opened it up and it was an ex-girlfriend that sent me um, this iPod that on the way to the game, I ended up getting the iPhone because everyone was so excited about this new iPhone. I'd never even seen one. Mm. And so ironically enough, I'm sitting in the hospital bed. I've got this phone that has battery. It's got no numbers on it or anything. And, um, and I remember, you know, people touching it, moving my stuff. And I was thinking, Oh God, like I, what about security? What about all these different things? And you know, I don't know really what's going on. And um, I ended up uh, having the janitor Google my friend that used to play football and broke me out of that hospital, which is a whole nother story <laughs> I'll tell another day. Wow. And so, yeah, and I was not in good shape, but I was, felt like I was dying in that hospital. So I wow. get into the next hospital and, and they basically, um, they started, you know, saying, look, we can't do surgery. It's too, they have too much liability. You might, we might hit the nerve. And, and so I ended up going to, uh, to six different uh, surgeons and I finally found someone that said, hey, I'm, I'm known for putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. So we'll go ahead and try to, you know, put titanium, which I, I have titanium for my elbow mm. all the way up to my humeral head. Mm. And um, and so, yeah, I'll never, ever forget it. Um, I did. I went through surgery. Um, you know, my real estate company, what I had left of it was going down the tubes because, I mean, let's face it. I was the face. I was the relationship. I didn't really create a business business where I right. could be somewhere else. And make money and so I'm realizing that all this stuff I learned actually wasn't working my real estate company's failing my real estate properties are going down I'm in a hospital they're saying you're gonna be six months multiple surgeries I'm freaked out totally freaked out depressed um, you know suicidal I, I was on so much medication I wasn't thinking right hmm. and uh, I was just in a really low place and uh, my best friends came to me at the time in the hospital and he said hey look I know you're in a really bad shape right now He's like, but I know you're a fighter. And he's like, there's there's apps. And I'm like, what do you mean apps? He's like, well, that phone you got. He's like, I've been reading stories because he was an old computer science major. Mm. He's like, I've heard stories of these these guys that don't even have any experience. And they've made a lot of money in apps. And he threw me over this article on on Joel, the, the iFart one. And I started reading it. And I was like, what? These guys are making money in these apps. And, and he said, you should maybe take a look at that. And so it gave me a spark of hope and I started, you know, on morphine and everything else, started sketching out with my opposite arm, mm. this idea for an app. I just want to be creative. And, um, since I was in this hospital and people had gone through my stuff and I had this phone, even though I had no data on it, my first thought went to security. And so I just drew out the security app and, uh, luckily enough for me in the hospital uh, room next to me was this guy from India that was in a full body cast. He also got in a car accident. Hmm. And, uh, and I started talking to him. And next thing I know, he's putting me in touch with his cousin who's in India, this company and out of New Hampshire. And I, I ended up um, somehow, I don't still remember this, but I borrowed money from my stepdad and, and wired them money and started going on my first app. And, wow. and that got me so motivated. I was like, oh, I was actually starting to get hopeful again and inspired again myself. And that that app dragged me out of, mm. um, of my depression. And, um, and luckily enough, um, I woke up one day and didn't even know what I was doing, but I got a, a message from Apple and I logged into my account for the first time and my app actually had gone live and I started making money from countries that I didn't even realize were countries. I just started bawling wow. and, uh, and bawling and bawling. I was like, wow, th th this is possible. Like this is, it is actually possible to make money Mm -hmm. while you sleep and to have automation I'm like holy shit this is it and um and i haven't looked back since wow man incredible what a what a great story 
What What are the chances? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it invented a new life with uh, your non dominant arm, <laughs> while your dominant arm is shattered. You're bionic now. And what are the <laughs> Completely chances bionic. You're, you're in a room next to an Indian dude of all things. Like, if I you know, ever need an amazing. Indian dude in your life, it's when you want to do, <laughs> get something technical done. Oh, so, that is so true. So, so true. <laughs> <laughs> I say that with all respect. Indian dudes would, uh, would totally be laughing. Their yeah, much out. smarter than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, wow, man. By the way, uh, we're in a brotherhood here because I'm also bionic. I have a metal, a titanium heart valve. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Which is a whole, you know, another story for now. Wow, like a well. boss. That's a whole yeah. other level. <laughs> yeah. A heart valve. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's funny, man. It, it ticks. Uh, one thing I'll tell you about it was funny. When I, when I first had it installed and I got out of the hospital, it was so loud. It's all, really? I, it's all I could hear. Like, t- 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 it was like a song was about to start, but never did. And I said to the doctor, I go, I, I think I'm going to go crazy. Like, you know, yeah. what he goes, he goes, he goes, I, it'll, it'll calm down. I'm like, well, that doesn't oh. sound good either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if I want that? that? What will that mean? You know, <laughs> so uh, incredible. Uh, wow. Oh, all awesome. right. So, so you, literally still in your hospital bed this is happening now let's get into a little bit more of the technical stuff for a couple minutes because uh so i'm sitting there and i'm i'm uh i've got this crazy idea for an app and uh you know what do i need to know how do you help me understand that this can be real what do people know totally yeah so so what people most don't know what i stumbled upon is that the market actually is telling you what to do, you know, and and more than any other industry. I mean, you, you're getting on your on your phone. You have the top charts. And so my advantage at the time was, I mean, I was pretty static and stagnant. I wasn't moving anywhere. So I was just looking at the store and I became a user. I started downloading the apps and playing with them. I started looking at the marketing. I saw what apps were working and I, I knew that people were making money on certain things and and so, I mean, I, I had no experience. Like, I'm as far from a technical, digital person that you can imagine. I mean, you know, I, I really am. Like, I, I hardly respond to emails. Um, and so, for me, it was it was about um, you know getting excited that oh, I can I can emulate this. I can I can I can copy what they've done and I can add my own spin on it and make it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And so, my advantage was that I, I was doing that. And I think most people don't realize that. It is not even about the idea. It's about like what is the market telling you it wants right now, and mm-hmm. what is it consistent for. And so, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. I didn't have any any you know disbeliefs just because it was a new industry. I'd never done it before. But when I went on and I saw that there are multiple apps doing multiple things and making all this money, I just reverse engineered it and put an app together that was similar. And um, and then you know when that one hit, fingerprint security, my first one. Um, that rose to the top of the app charts. It was like top 25. And, um, you know, I started doing, I did millions of downloads on this, this app and, and, um, and then, you know, things started going down a little bit and I was like, okay, what do I do now? And I just kept looking back at the marketplace. And, uh, I think, you know, between the marketplace telling you what's going on and also, you know, the ability to, to sort of just act on it and instead of waiting and saying, okay, what's going to happen. But, Taking the information and actually using it, as as sort of ridiculous as that sounds, is what most people just don't do. Yeah, and it's very easy. Yeah. It's great. It doesn't sound ridiculous to me because I see it every day. People, uh, again, so much of what stands in our way is us. Yes. We, it, it, the thing, the themes I'm loving here in your your story here, Chad, is uh, this kind of blind faith of going forward and you're clearly not a cynical person you know right like you know the most a lot of people would go through the help you sell thing and you know you did whatever you moved heaven and earth to make that happen in hindsight maybe it was or maybe it wasn't the best thing or uh it, 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 something you'd recommend but you never you carried nothing but positive momentum th- into it right and yeah. if we approach things like that and we go, you know, worst things is going to happen. Maybe I won't get rich. Maybe this won't be the final thing for me, but it's the right now thing. And it's what you teach yourself and the, in the patterns you establish about how you approach things and what you gain from them, which is sometimes just knowledge, sometimes just hard luck lessons. Uh, but 
if you just keep carrying that momentum forward all the time, you will arrive at something that works. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. 100%. I can agree with you more. And I think for me, it was, and most people, you know, we all want to do what we love. We all want passive income. We all want like automation and the ability to sort of, you know, not kill ourselves while income comes in. And so, you know, I tried businesses that didn't work. And um, I think I've always been sort of open because I've, I've known it's there. Mm-hmm. And luckily, when an apps came into my life, it really proved to me that this is a model that really works. And, um, and that's what, you know, I've been able to build out multiple portfolios. I've had over 100 million downloads, sold four app companies. Um, I just kept repeating it, I kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And, uh, and you can be creative because you can pick different apps, you know, and different things to do. And so it was just amazing to me to think about in my head, I have this vision of something. And in two to three weeks, I can have that in some random place, mm. say, in, uh, you know, I mean, it can be in any country, right? Like Romania, they're downloading my app. Mm-hmm. And, and I just had it in my head three weeks ago. And so wow. that blows my mind and yeah. that I don't have to collect the money. I don't have to worry about any of the distribution. And I can wake up 30 days later and have the exact money from Apple in my bank account without doing anything. I was like, whoa, where, when did this happen? <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> and we think about how much we all use apps every single day. How many times do you scroll through your phone and click on apps for different stuff? It, all the it time. It is a major part of our lives. Uh, it sure is. All right, give us some like uh, real black and white stuff. Because I love what you said, like watch the market. The, and uh-huh. you know, the market tells you all so watch mm-hmm. trends, see what, you know, what do you play with? What do you use the most? What's trending? Totally. What's being downloaded? But is there like a really basic good app, bad app idea? Game? Yeah, I, I totally. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I can speak into that. So what, what I do that's a little bit different as well. So a lot of people, they go for these trendy different apps and they go in like, oh, my God, like, you know, Trump's being talked about. Let's do a Trump app or mm-hmm. oh, it's Christmas. Let's just do a Christmas app. And and uh, and, and what they don't realize is like that's a, a launch for a small period of time. Mm-hmm. And when I go into apps, I go into evergreen. So it's mm-hmm. long term. So I want to go into things that I know are going to be utilitarian for a very long time. And so when I look at that, I look into security stuff. I look into weather stuff. I look into ringtones. I've got one of the biggest emoji apps out there. I, I look into stuff that I feel like in five years, people will need to do it. And, and for me, because of that, it, it's really easy to, to build a business out of these apps. And it's really easy to, to, to have evergreen income coming in. So, so I look at the charts, I go ahead and I pick, you know, on the top charts, what apps do I already think are going to be evergreen? So right now you can look at them. There's like weather apps, like hurricane trackers, all these things going on. Like that's, that happens every single year. And so I go on, I'll, I'll, I'll circle them, you know, or I'll just go ahead and I'll notate them in my notes. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go on, um, you know, topappcharts.com or app Annie and I'll plug in those apps and I'll start seeing, have they been spiky? Have they been going on for a while? And I'll start to say, okay, well, this app has been very consistent and I'll start understanding who that demographic is, what other apps are downloading. And I I do a cross pollination game. So I'm like, well, this app has been successful and I know I can do this and they're missing maybe just one thing. So I see see that this one thing from the ratings, I mean, this is business 101. This will work in anything, physical products, digital products. um, But apps is great because it's fast. And so I can go on and see from their ratings they're missing something and um and so i can go ahead and create this app and push it with my network and get it up into the charts fairly quickly Mm. um but but that's really my my move is i focus on apps that you know all i got to do is is find the marketing to them and they will work the the need is there the market is screaming for them and there's lots Mm -hmm. of other apps that are very similar that are in there so i know that people are consuming them most people say i have an app idea and it's a brand new app i've never heard of it it sounds great, you know. I could get excited about it, but not to make money because if the app store is not showing me that it's actually mm-hmm. a viable option, then then there is no option, right? Yeah, absolutely right. So, yeah, idea great, validation key, uh, yep. and then look at the numbers. Yep, F- fantastic, Chad. I've really enjoyed this. I want to ask you the essential question. There's one question I ask to every guest, and you may yeah. have already may have already touched on it, but I'm gonna 
I'm going to ask you anyway because all your answers have been great. And thanks for sharing all the inspiration, man. No problem. Um, My pleasure. I want to make sure everybody knows where to find you. It's appempire.com. Uh, yep, appempire.com. Exactly. Great. Okay, so Chad Moretta, what is the one thing you've done in your marketing that has produced the most surprising results? Ooh, that is a great question. The, 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 the one thing I have done. Um, well, yeah, I would say the one thing that I, and I started doing it with apps is um, I stopped I stopped just get going for like the number one benefit and or feature because I kept on trying to market that way and get in their shoes. And I started actually with with giving them an emotion based on that. So my my screenshots, my number one screenshots, because I knew that, you know, there's one it's basically like they're at my table and I need to sell them. I would create a screenshot that uh, and nobody was doing this. It would be a picture with a little bit of copy and the whole goal was how emotional is this getting people mm. is this like break their pattern is it this like shock and awe like what the hell is that oh my god and i started doing that um and you know in a very classy way but still in like a shocking way mm -hmm. and uh, and i thought apple would take me off i didn't know if people would actually go through with it and and that that worked incredibly well incredibly well um and it still does Fantastic. I love that. It comes all back to emotional copy. <laughs> yes. And uh, yes. going past what we say, we people buy an emotion and they justify it with logic. And totally. Something else I love about apps is like there's not a, a lot of buyer's remorse or justification after the fact. Right. I don't know. I've paid up to 30 bucks for an app, but never th thought to return it if I didn't use it that much or anything. It's, you know. Exactly. It's an impetuous, you know, five second purchase. And I mean, how many apps do you have probably even on subscription right yeah. now that uh, I'm not even checking, you know, I get billed every month, but I think it's under a hundred bucks. I hope it is. Um, so yeah, it's a very different vehicle for sure. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, yeah. thanks for doing this, Chad. Uh, no problem. Be definitely pleasure, Kevin. following what you're doing over there and, uh, wish you all the best, man. Hope we talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Hey, thanks again for listening to the Truth About Marketing podcast. If you like this show and you think other people would like this show, the best way to spread the word is by reviewing and rating the show in iTunes. Just log in, click review, leave a big old fat five-star review, and let everybody know that you dig the show so that they can dig it too. To get all the links and resources we mentioned on today's episode, please go to copychief.com forward slash TAM, as in truth about marketing. And if you'd like to uh, learn more about how you can improve your sales copy with uh, templates, formulas, coaching, feedback, or hiring a pro, do all that on the inside of the members area of copychief.com. And I will look for you there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.